All right, let's cover the uh, the British airdrops. So the first, well, first, well, you don't check weather for the first. I don't think you check it till game turn four. Go back and read that. Um, so the first phase is your airdrops. Since we're only playing the Commonwealth beaches, we're doing the British airborne drops. All right, so the routine is you have on your chart here, you have the these DZ markers, and on the counter they have a hex, and you place those in, a, in the proper hex on the map, and they can't be destroyed and they can't be moved. And then you, your units will drop initially, whatever DZ they're assigned to or LZ, they'll they'll land. They'll, they'll, you'll start with placing them one at a time on the DZ, and then you have this chart here called a scatter chart. And what you do is you roll two dice, okay? One will be for the direction, which you see on the scatter chart, and the other will be for the number of hexes they scatter, minus one. So that way you can potentially roll a zero and they can land right on there on the DZ. Um, so, for example, we'll take one of these units down here. So that sixth airborne DZ right there, DZK, all right, so this unit here, his scatter roll was a five, and his distance roll was a three minus one for a two. So he started on the DZ, he moved two hexes in direction five, and that's where he landed at. All right, straighten him out there. All right, so now once a unit is landed, you get them all landed, then you go back and you do a, a we'll sort of call it a damage roll for the type of terrain they're in. So you look on your terrain chart, which I should have probably got that, kept that out. Go dig that up. So on your terrain chart, you have a column called airdrop, right? For whatever type of terrain they're in. So what you do is you roll a dice, and if it's equal to or less than the number in the airdrop column for that type of terrain, if it's equal to or less than, they lose a step. All right. If they should land in all water, they're eliminated. All right. If they land in adjacent to a, an enemy, you take a minus two on the die roll. So that means these guys that landed in clear hexes uh, if you roll a one or a two, you're going to take a minus two if they're in a, an enemy zone of control. So they'll end up losing a, a step, which happened right here to this unit from the third para. All right. Not only that, but they landed in a city gray. The gray ones are cities. The brownish colored ones are towns. Okay. Towns or villages, whatever. So the odds are he was going to lose a step anyhow. So yes, he did. All right. We had an engineer company that landed over here with this unit in the marsh, and he was only a one-step unit, He was so he was eliminated. And then these two guys right here that are on their light-colored side, their backsides, they landed in the woods, which is a roll of three or less, and both of them took a step loss. All right, so British drops, not bad. Lost an engineer company, and three paratroop companies, took step losses, right? Now, gliders, <coughs> thank God, too. When gliders land, I'm going to give you an example right here. That 236 right there, glider company. Gliders, when they land, after you do your scatter and stuff, you get to adjust in any direction you want by one hex where they land, which is supposed to be demonstrating uh, the ability for the glider pilot to land. So... This guy actually landed out here in the water, which would have killed him. But since I got the ability to move, I moved him in on the coast right there. All right. And he survived that. All right. So, and I put him next to town so maybe they can, they can capture that town. So that's pretty simple. Um, scatter chart, two dice, one for direction, one for distance. Take off one. For the distance, gives them a chance to land right on their DZ. Then once they're all down, you roll for, uh, if they take any damage from the terrain type they're in. 
Uh, you get a die roll modifier of minus two if they're if they are adjacent to an enemy. If they land on an enemy unit, they automatically lose. They instantly lose one step loss. Okay. Uh, let's see. Lands in full water, they're eliminated. And that is it for the, the British Airborne drops. Now, you know, like I said, if I was playing the full game, I would have done the 101 and the 82nd too, but I'm only playing combo. And this this is the only place they landed over here. Now, I do have a couple of the other DZs that weren't used this turn. They'll come in on turn four, but I put them in play just so I could see for myself. Like, I think this one up here is a turn four, and then there's one other one. I think it's the one right down here next to it. So, yeah, those will get used on the... On the uh, now, let's see, it's LZW and LZN, this one right there. So they'll get used on turn four with the remaining drops. All right, so not a bad drop. One company lost and three companies took step losses. All right, so that's how you do uh, the drops to the, the drop zones and the landing zones. Pretty simple, nothing too fancy about it. One or two modifiers you might have to use. Uh, if you're playing this game, there's a, somebody printed out a turn-for-turn turn sequence of play where you can just mark off the steps as you do them. All right? So next we're going to do the preliminary uh, bombardment and stuff like that. We'll get on to that. As soon as we uh, uh, accomplish that, we'll get back on. We'll film that and we'll post that one up. All right, so this is turn one, day of days. The first segment, which is the uh, airdrops, the allied airdrops, all right? And that's, we did the, the British para drops, and then we'll pick up from there with the next one. All right, we'll talk to you all soon.